I've been putting off this problem for far too long. Imagine if every single photo and video you shot had this little thing. It's small, sometimes barely noticeable, but it's always there in every photo and dancing around in every video. For the past year, this annoying little thing has been ruining the precious memories I try and capture. And in this video, I'm finally gonna try and fix the smallest, most annoying problem in my life. People say the best camera is the one you have with you. For me, that's the one on my first generation iPhone SE. It also happens to be the camera with that annoying little thing problem. Of course, the easiest solution is to just get a new phone, a newer, more modern iPhone with an even better camera. But the truth is, this tiny iPhone SE does things the newer ones just can't. I like being able to reach all four corners with one hand. And I like the way it comfortably slides in and out of my pockets, back or front. I like the design and the home button with its built-in fingerprint sensor. I like how the camera doesn't stick out, but instead sits flush with the back of the phone. And I like the way it fits perfectly into the slot of my car. I like that I can plug in both an auxiliary cord and a charging cord at the same time. And I especially like that it takes great photos and shoots beautiful 4K video. About the only thing I don't like about this phone is this annoying little thing that shows up in all of them. But it wasn't always this way. In fact, the iPhone SE I use today was not the one I used in the past. To understand how this phone and this problem entered my life, I need to introduce you to my friend Curtis and my old iPhone SE. Curtis shares my love for this phone. For years, he and I used the exact same phone. Same color, same 128 gigabytes of storage. While all our other friends were upgrading to newer models, he and I stuck with our first generation iPhone SEs. But as time went on, the battery in my old iPhone SE began to fail. I replaced the battery myself, but while lifting up the display glass, I accidentally tore the delicate cable that connects to the home button and fingerprint sensor. Replacing the cable does fix the home button, but the fingerprint sensor cannot be fixed. It only works with the original cable. Once that cable is broken, you lose Touch ID functionality forever. I still use the phone, but since the home button and fingerprint sensor no longer worked, I had to instead use a floating on-screen home button and manually type in my passcode every single time. And that new battery I put in would either drain super fast or just randomly die. But I continue to use my old iPhone SE like this for months, because to me, the pros still outweighed the cons. If I were to replace it, I'd want the exact same model. But since it's such an old phone, trying to find a 128 gigabyte storage model in good condition with a good battery is almost impossible. And that's where Curtis comes in. Last summer, while at Curtis's house, I noticed he had gotten a new phone. I asked what happened, and he explained that the battery on his old iPhone SE also began to fail, and he took it as an opportunity to upgrade. He still decided to get the battery replaced, however, but unlike me, he took it to a repair shop that was able to replace the battery without damaging that delicate home button fingerprint sensor cable. And ever since Curtis had gotten his new phone, his old iPhone SE was just sitting around with its fresh battery and fully functional home button and fingerprint sensor not being used. Holding Curtis's old iPhone SE in my hands, I thought this is it. This is exactly what I've been looking for. No longer would I have to manually type in my passcode and no longer would I have to use the annoying on-screen home button. So I decided to make Curtis an offer for his old iPhone SE. An offer that I knew he couldn't refuse. But he did. So I doubled the offer and he still refused. I didn't understand why. Curtis is a good friend of mine and he wasn't even using that phone anymore. Then, a couple months later, Curtis gifted me his old iPhone SE, free of charge. Knowing how much I liked the phone, how hard it was to get, and the problems with my old iPhone SE, he was simply waiting for the perfect time to gift it to me. 
Curtis is a great friend. And the phone I use today is actually Curtis's old iPhone SE. The first few months were great. The home button and fingerprint sensor worked as intended. The battery was brand new and held a charge as it should. And it took the same great photos and videos. Everything was fantastic. But then I noticed it. This. Every single photo and video I've taken since getting this phone, it's there. At first I thought, well, maybe it's just something on the lens. So I tried to wipe it off. But the problem lay deeper than that. The problem is within the camera module itself. Which makes me wonder, what if Curtis knew all along? What if he gave me this phone, not from the kindness of his heart, but because he too was being plagued by this small imperfection, ruining all his photos and videos. Look at this first photo I took of Curtis with the iPhone SE that he gifted me. Can you see it? It's right there under his eye. Or maybe he had no idea. I don't know. But after almost a year of all my photos and videos being ruined by this annoying little thing, I'm finally going to sit down today and try to fix it. Here I'm taking out the camera from my old iPhone SE. This is the camera that still works well. Now I gotta make sure not to break that cable again, so let me try that. This part is super sketchy. Whew, that's the most stressful part done. A few minutes later. In this shot, I'm removing the broken camera from the iPhone SE I currently use. So this is the camera that was causing me all those troubles. And here I'm installing the good camera from my old iPhone SE. This I'm hoping will fix the problem. And here I am just reassembling my current iPhone SE. Looks properly seated there. The moment of truth, does it turn on? We'll see. That's a good sign. <laughs> so this is the Touch ID test here. Should just let me in. Oh, the Touch ID still works. Okay, beautiful. Uh, we'll open up the camera app. No freaking way. It's perfect. There's no more thing in there anymore. It's beautiful. It works. I can use this again. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so grateful for that. You might be wondering why I went through all this just to fix a six-year-old phone. Well, it's not just a phone. It's the camera I use most. It captures the memories of my life and those memories tell stories. This might have just been a small phone repair, but getting it done means I can continue to use my favorite phone and now I'll be able to enjoy every photo and video I take with it. It's so easy to put off these small, minor problems, but if we just take the time to sit down and fix them, our lives can be a lot better as a result. Sure, it might have been easier to just get a new iPhone, but sometimes the easiest solution can come with its own set of problems. Curtis, buddy. Ryan. How's it going? How are you? Good. I got to ask you a question about this iPhone SE that you gifted me. What's up? Did you know that the camera had a little thing that shows up in every single photo when you gave it to me? Does it really? 